morning! Happy Monday, October 3rd. This is the cheat sheet for today. I already saw all the Halloween movies starting to come into play. It is kind of nuts that it's October already. But there is a long-awaited announcement that does come with early October this year. And that is the iPhone 5 announcement. That's tomorrow. In advance of it, something I had mentioned to you months ago looks like it is going to happen, which is also good news because one of our colleagues here at the radio station recently said, yeah, if you hang on, because she's a Sprint customer and her phone just died. I said, if you can hang in there, you will have the opportunity for the iPhone 5 on Sprint. It is clear that it is going to happen. Among the other announcements, Sprint will have full access to the iPhone 5, including the option for unlimited plans. So three of the four nationwide providers being AT&T, Sprint, and now, um, I'm sorry, AT&T, Verizon, and now Sprint will all have access for unlimited plans on the iPhone 5. Uh, nevertheless, the announcement tomorrow will still hold some other goodies for you. The USPS, the news not good here. Uh, now, I told you going into September that they were going to be in dire straits by the end of the month without action by Congress. Well, no action by Congress during the course of the month, and here we are in October. There's no word on exactly when the USPS would run out of money. Some people think they can get into January. It'll be hard to tell here. We already know that they've suspended benefit matching and uh, health care contributions and everything else uh, for the retirement plans. Well, uh, we now have a, another look inside of their business. USPS has lost 47% of all mail business since 2001. So 10 years, 47% loss of business, and it's only been accelerating in recent years. I do hope Congress does act on the Postmaster General's recent plan they submitted before September because I've gone over the numbers there, and it works, at least for now, and there's no reason to force the USPS into burning through what little money it has left. Go ahead, pass the plan, and at least get them on their way to sustainability again. Speaking of which, Kodak is in that boat. It's kind of like a race to the bottom. USPS has been around for 150 years. Kodak for 131. They're in the same position as USPS, praying for help at this point. Uh, Kodak, on uh, late in the day Friday, hired some attorneys to try to help them figure out how to get through their dire mess they're in. Kodak is saying that they're going to avoid bankruptcy, at least for now. Uh, but hiring attorneys to help them understand how they can continue as a going concern, anytime you hear the term going concern, means that they're not likely to be a going concern. The highlight for Kodak came in 1996. Their stock, over $80 this year. At the close of trading on Friday, $0.78 cents per share. That's how dire the situation for Eastman Kodak is. Huffington Post set a new record um, last month. They became the first pure blog site to keep 1 billion monthly page views on their site. They are hiring, they're acquiring more companies, and uh, they are uh, leading the way as far as the new media is concerned, which takes me to the next story. The new media, which is online journalism, is trying to hire some of the most refined journalists from the old media away. The New York Times, their top tech reporter, was offered $1.5 million over the weekend by CNET to join the ranks which is a lesson for all of you younger reporters or would-be reporters out there. If you want to get into the news business, we're not trying to keep you away from doing what, well, I do, for example, or any of the other people in television, newspaper, radio. If you love it, you love it. But get, you got to understand that digital is where the action is. And if you can do stories online, which we're required to do every day, like this cheat sheet, uh, then you're missing the boat. And you're also missing where the money is going to be in future years as well. And... Uh, the Kindle Fire. They're not going to lose as much on the Kindle Fire as had first been believed. Originally, we thought they were going to lose $48 on every Kindle they sold you. It's going to be closer to $10 that Amazon loses, but the lesson is still there. They are loss leading to try to get you to buy the Kindle Fire to sell you everything else on the Amazon platform. And I do believe the Kindle Fire will be the number one Android based tablet by the end of the year. And United Health Plans, this is kind of interesting. They are going to become a direct seller of hearing aids. Uh, the reason is twofold. One, uh, they want to try to control cost. The hearing aid consumption is booming right now, and it's costing them a lot of money. But the other thing, too, is uh, by being able to offer them direct, as boomers move on to Medicare and Medicaid, they will be able to offer uh, those hearing aids, uh, which will allow more involvement with boomers as they grow away from traditional employee sponsored plans. So cheaper hearing aids. The copay on them, uh, United Healthcare is saying will start at $649. Not bad. 
That's the cheat sheet for today. We'll see you tomorrow.